Hi, this is Susanna from Hold It Right There Sewing Patterns. Thanks for watching my video tutorial series for my sewing pattern, the Corcoran Crossbody Bag. To make the Corcoran Crossbody Bag, you will need to purchase the sewing pattern from my website linked below. In this video, I will walk you through the instructions for making the exterior of the Corcoran. So let's begin. Locate the exterior panel back top A2. To determine the center, fold the A2 piece in half, short side to short side, and wrong sides together. At the bottom crease, mark the center with a pen. On your prepared flap, mark the center along the straight raw edge on the fabric 2 or exterior side. Place the A2 piece right side up. With the zipper side of the flap facing right side up, center the raw edge of the flap with the bottom edge of the exterior panel back A2. Match those markings that you just made, pin or clip in place, and then baste using a quarter inch seam allowance. You will now need exterior panel back bottom A3. Centered on the right side, one inch below the top edge, mark the insertion point for a female magnetic snap half. Refer to step 12 to mark and cut the incisions for the snap prongs only. Do not install the snap yet. Right sides together, align the top edge of exterior panel back bottom A3 to the bottom edge of A2 with the flap sandwiched in between pin or clip together. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. Press the exterior panel back bottom A3 away from the flap and then top stitch 1 8 inch from the seam. Following steps 13 and 14, now install the female magnetic snap half in the prepared incisions. Trim the square of stabilizer to fit beneath the seam as needed. Once again, if you like, fuse a scrap of interfacing over the wrong side of the magnetic snap prongs and trim the uh, corner seam allowances just again to reduce bulk in the later construction of the bag. Set this piece aside for now. You will now need the B1 and B2 pieces. These are the exterior slip pocket top and bottom pieces. Right sides together, pin or clip the bottom edge of B1 to the top edge of B2. Repeat with a second set of B1, B2 pieces, then sew both using a half inch seam allowance. Press and then top stitch 1 8 inch above the seam on both. Decide which one of your joined B1, B2 pieces you want to have on the exterior front panel. This will connect to the flap with a magnetic snap. Mark the insertion point for a female magnetic snap half centered two and a half inches from the bottom edge. Follow steps two through 14 to install this snap. Locate one exterior slip pocket lining B3. This piece will attach to the A3 snap installed in step 18. Mark the insertion point for a male magnetic snap half centered one and three fourths inch from the top edge. You can also use the pattern piece with the marking indicated. I punched out the hole where it is indicated and then I just use my marking pencil to draw through the hole onto the fabric so that I know where to place my magnetic snap. Follow steps 12 through 14 to install this snap. With the male magnetic snap half installed, you will now need to locate the joined B1, B2 piece without a magnetic snap, and this is what you prepared in step 19. Right sides together, pin or clip the top edge of the prepared B3 piece to the top edge of B1. So using a half inch seam allowance, press the seams open and turn right side out. Top stitch 1 8 inch from the top edge. Repeat with the remaining joined B1, B2 piece and the exterior slip pocket lining B3. 
Press and top stitch just as you did before. You will now need the exterior panel front A1. Place this right side up and place the prepared exterior front slip pocket. This is the one with the female magnetic snap two and a half inches below the top straight edge of A1. Pin or clip together. Baste using a quarter inch seam allowance. You will now need the prepared exterior panel back, the A2, A3, and joined flap. Place this right side up. Place the exterior back slip pocket two and a half inches below the top straight edge of A2. Connect the magnetic snaps, then pin or clip and baste using a quarter inch seam allowance. Before we move on, if you have not done this already, mark the center bottom on both the exterior front and exterior back panels. Locate the D-ring connectors F. Turn wrong side up. Draw a center vertical line over the interfacing. Repeat with the second D-ring connector. Apply double-sided tape along the drawn lines. Bring the long raw edges to meet the center marking. Press firmly against the tape to adhere. Then repeat with the second D-ring connector. Turn right side up. Top stitch 1 8 inch from each long folded edge. Insert each connector through the D-rings. Fold the connectors in half, matching the raw edges. Pin or clip the raw edges together. Repeat with the second D-ring and D-ring connector. Mark a line one inch below the raw edge of each connector. Locate exterior gusset top D1. Align the one inch markings on the D-ring connectors with the bottom center raw edge of the exterior gusset top. Be sure the D-rings face upward. The raw edges of the D-ring connectors will extend below the D1 piece. Use double-sided tape to secure. Sew the D-ring connectors one quarter inch from the bottom raw edge of D1. Repeat with the second D-ring connector and D1 piece. Locate exterior gusset side D2. Place right sides together. Pin or clip along one short side. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. Press the seam allowances open. Turn right side up and top stitch 1 8 inch to the left and right of the seam. Right sides together, pin or clip the bottom edge of exterior gusset top D1 with the short raw edge of exterior gusset side D2. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. Press and then turn right side up. Top stitch 1 8 inch below the seam. Mark the rivet insertions centered on the gusset one half inch below the seam, one half inch above the seam, and one half inch above the second marking. Follow manufacturer's instructions to install the rivets. Then repeat with the remaining D1 and the second short side of D2. Our exterior gusset is now prepared and ready to be attached to the exterior front panel A1. Right sides together, align the center bottom marking on A1 with the center seam of your gusset D2. Pin or clip, and then align the upper seams on the exterior gusset D1, D2, where they join with the top edge of the exterior slip pocket. Pin or clip together. And again, align the upper seams of the exterior gusset, D1, D2, with the top edge of the exterior slip pocket on the opposite side of the bag, and pin or clip these together. We're now going to pin or clip the straight sides of the bag panel to the gusset, and we're leaving those curved bottom edges to last. To ease around the curves, make scant one quarter inch snips in the gusset. This is going to help the gusset fit neatly without puckering to the bag panel. Then go ahead and pin or clip the remainder of the gusset to the bag panel. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. 
Locate the prepared exterior panel back, A2, A3, and joined flap. Follow step 28 to pin or clip this remaining side of the gusset to the panel in exactly the same way. Once your gusset is fully pinned or clipped, then sew using a half inch seam allowance. Trim the seam allowances on both sides of the gusset. Once you've finished trimming the seam allowances of the gusset, turn the bag right side out, give it a press, and your exterior of your Corcoran crossbody bag is complete. Set it aside for now, and we'll move on to the lining pockets in my next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing.